Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, this evening I want to start a series of studies on the book of Revelation. Uh, tonight will be lesson number one and it will be very introductory. I simply want to look at the first phrase, in the t in, in, which is also the title of the book, that is the Revelation of Jesus Christ. I want us to understand and, and lay as a foundation what exactly concerning Christ this prophecy was revealing because it is the revelation that is the unveiling or the laying bare and laying naked disclosing of Jesus Christ. So let's let's jump into this. I'm going to read Revelation 1.1 and we'll jump in. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his bondservants the things which must soon take place and he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bondservant, John. Now, first thing I'll say is this, is this is not something that God knew, that Jesus did not know, that God the Father is now giving to Jesus to reveal. This is the revelation of the Son of God that God the Father granted to him, that he allowed him, that he gave him the honor of unveiling about himself. Let me say it another way. This is the revelation, the unveiling of Christ as one with the Father in the glory of the Father that the Father allowed Christ to manifest to his holy ones. This is what the book is about. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ as one with the Father. His revelation as God Almighty of the Old Testament. We'll get back to those thoughts in a little bit. For now, let's look at the definition of the word revelation. It is the Greek word apocalypsis, which means a laying bare, a making naked, and appearing a manifestation. Now watch this. This is an interesting uh, definition out of uh, Strong's definition. Listen to this. Uh, sorry, Strong's Concordance. It's used, that is, apocalypsis, revelation, is used of events by which things or states or persons, which although withdrawn from view, are made visible to all. In other words, the revelation, this apocalypsis, in the context of the book of Revelation, is events, historical redemptive events, which unveil and make visible spiritual, invisible realities concerning Christ. And I'll say it like this. The historical redemptive events that took place in a soon near time period from John's perspective in the, in, in the first century generation unveiled the eternal, spiritual, invisible character and nature of Jesus Christ as one with the Father in the glory of the Father. This is the purpose of the book. The revelation of Jesus Christ is his unveiling through the historical redemptive events of the first century as God of the Old Testament. We'll, we'll have lots more to say about that in future lessons. But let's take a look at this. This revelation of Jesus Christ that John said would soon take place and the time was at hand in Revelation 1.1.1.3 was anticipated by not only Jesus Christ in his own generation, but by the rest of the apostles as well. Notice, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verses 4 through 8, I'm going to list off some passages here concerning this identical revelation. I don't have time to get into these. You ju jump into them. Uh, but I'll just cite them here. And all of the apostles anticipated and expected the same revelation of Jesus Christ as John did in the book of Revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 4 through 8, Paul anticipates the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, Paul calls it, uh, he, he, he makes mention of when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. That is the revelation of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 1, the apostle Peter he looks forward to the salvation that was ready to be revealed. That is the salvation of their souls. It is the grace to be brought to them at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that salvation and that grace, Peter calls the glories to follow his sufferings. And Peter says that the, even the prophets of old knew that those things to which they prophet, uh, prophesied that were being revealed through the apostles by the Holy Spirit were not for 
the prophet's days, but they were for the apostolic generation to which Peter was writing. And 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, verses 12 through 13, Peter once again refers to this revelation of Jesus Christ as the revelation of his glory. And just do yourself a favor, compare that passage to John chapter 7, the Gospel of John 17, verse 5, where Jesus prays to the Father that uh, he goes to the Father and that the Father glorify him with the glory that he had with him before the world was. Jesus was glorified at his ascension, seated at the right hand of the Father as King of kings, as Lord of lords, and his coming again in power and great glory was the manifested, sorry, the manifestation and the revealing of Christ in that glory, in the glory of the Father. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, John, Peter, and Paul all got this anticipation, this first century anticipation of the revelation of Jesus Christ based on the promise and the prophecy of Christ himself. For example, Matthew 16, 27 and 28, very familiar passage, for the Son of Man is going to come, that is his revelation, his coming, in the glory of the Father, with his angels, that sounds a lot like 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 3 through 8, and then we'll repay every man according to his deeds. And Jesus placed it in the lifetime of his own generation. There'll be some standing here who won't taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And again, in Matthew 24, 30 through 30, 31, you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That is his coming in the glory of the Father, just like he, he, he prayed to the Father, Father, let my glory be revealed, the glory that I shared with you before the foundation of the world. And he says, this generation will not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. This is, in different phraseology for sure, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus never used the word apocalypsis uh, like Peter, Paul, and, and John did. Jesus used the word parousia. This is his appearing, his revelation. As a matter of fact, the appearing of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ, is his parousia. It is the, the covenant return of his presence to be with his covenant people through, that is manifested through, the historical redemptive events that were soon to take place. The revelation of Jesus Christ is a singular prophecy concerning historical redemptive events that were about to take place that were that would reveal Jesus Christ as God of the Old Testament as one with the Father coming and being uh, present with his people in the glory of the Father and his revelation also was the the revealing of the character and nature of the Father he would come in judgment he would come in vindication he would bring uh, he would bring persecution upon the enemies of his people, and he would be, bring salvation and redemption for his covenant people. Just like the Father had been revealed through judgment and through salvation, through historical redemptive events in, historical, in, in, in the past, in Israel's redemptive history. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ that John anticipated in the first century generation. Let me read a conclusion I have here. Uh, I, I've, I've a short study I've, I've prepared. I'll do this as I do my videos. I usually write a little bit. So I'll upload these studies with these videos. You guys can just go through them at your, at your own pace or whatever you wanna do. In conclusion, the revelation of Jesus Christ is not about historical events which extend beyond the first century generation uh, or the end of time. The revelation of Jesus Christ is about historical redemptive events that were limited to the first century generation in the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. The revelation of Jesus Christ is a prophecy that it, it is a divine foretelling concerning the unveiling of the invisible and eternal identity of Jesus as God of the Old Testament. Watch this. Through the fulfillment of the historical redemptive events that were at that time soon to take place. The revelation of Jesus Christ is his invisible appearing in the glory of his Father, that is, in the character and nature of the Father and the consummative, consummative arrival of his new covenant presence among his people. The revelation of Jesus Christ is not 
scattered events to take place in our future that somehow reveal something about Jesus that Jesus didn't know, that only the Father knew, but now revealed to Jesus, or something like that. The revelation of Jesus Christ was his coming again in the first century generation, his unveiling, his making known through those redemptive historical judgment and, and, and salvation events, the eternal character nature of the Father and the Son as one, Jesus Christ being revealed in the glory and, 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 and power of the Father. We'll pick it up next time on Answers on Eschatology. God bless and have a great night.